Well, we have left the French Canal system after going to a beautiful little music festival locally last night. Um, we took the ebb. It's been a long time since I've been river sailing and I miss it. We took the ebb down from the uh, waiting pontoon outside the last lock and we came down the river to the beautiful French city of Bordeaux. And here, and here we are. Oh, and there's a breeze up here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Nick has a camera today. Uh -oh. And I'm determined to do all the things that he does that really annoys me. One of which, hang on, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> One of which. <laughs> stop it, stop it. <laughs> oh, okay. I am probably going to be the one editing this video, and I guarantee you that whatever introduction Nick just made, I will have edited it down by about 90%. You <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Hello from Pouillac on the uh, west coast of France, just down the river Garonne from the Atlantic Ocean and we are in the marina here and just about to go and get our mast taken off. So uh, we've been waiting for the tide to come in. This is a tidal marina, so that means it dries out at low water, or some of it does. And so we've been waiting for there to be enough water over at the uh, dock where they do the, the mast stepping. And the plan is that they're gonna take our mast off now. And then it's, it's about, what time is it, about 3, th yeah, about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then we are going to leave the mast on trestles overnight so that we can prepare it to be stepped tomorrow morning. So with any luck, by tomorrow lunchtime, we will have the mast back on and we'll be a bit of a sailing boat again. So that is the plan. And uh, I must say that I'm quite, I'm quite excited. Nick and I are both looking forward to having this boat be a sailboat again um, as amazing as it's been uh, doing the French canals the boat itself has become quite cluttered and there's lots of stuff on the coach roof and on the decks and it would just be nice to clear it all up and uh, and get it back to the way it should be Well, that was uh, no less nerve-wracking than taking the mast off. And we still have to put it back on tomorrow. <clears throat> but anyway, so they're going to take the mast and put it on trestles for the night. Nick is offloading everything that we need to attach to the mast as much as, as, much as possible. Um, that's going to be our job for this evening. I think we've got quite a long evening ahead. And then, all going well, tomorrow morning we'll be back here in this spot and uh, they'll put the mask back on. Easy as that. <laughs> Good morning. It is a very hot and humid morning here in Puyak. So today is hopefully mast stepping day. Um, I am a little bit skittish about this because we never stepped a mast before and I don't really know what to expect but uh, as with all these things where you don't know what to do just prepare, prepare, prepare and do as much preparation as possible so you're not caught out by your own inadequacies in life. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Focus. What, what uh, have you actually been doing to the mast? Well, so last night they took the mast 
off the our cradles and put them on these big galvanized zinc frames mm. that allowed us to put the spreaders back on and put the standing rigging back on also to check the standing standing rigging uh, we changed a couple of bits of the standing rigging just because um, yeah I wasn't happy with it so that's been done uh, so we did that so the spreaders are back on the standing rigging is back on and I kind of we unsecured all this kind of tape uh, and string that was holding all the all everything in place took the buckets off uh, examined everything thankfully there is nothing uh, there was no damage during our trip which is good news we put all the electrics back so the the the, the lights the VHF aerial the radar that's all been reinstalled so that's all done the one thing I can't do is check it all before we go back on to, to before they step the mast uh, there's no way of doing that and this morning I've gone back and what I'm doing is I'm kind of splaying out all the standing rigging um, to make sure it's everything's okay I'm putting back the stern the putting the turn buckles back on making sure they run freely by uh, using a lot of silicon grease and then um, making sure they're all clean once they turn freely um, they're taped then wrapped in cling film or glad wrap um, and then taped again the reason for the cling film is that there's a lot of grit here um, and once they're clean I don't want grit getting into them so I've kind of wrapped up all the threads so that you know that's that done that's I'll idea. do the other side and then what I'm going to do later uh, the running rigging um, we'll look at after this I want to get the standing done and then I want to make sure that we've got all the last little bits um, and I'm going to wrap the furler and the foil um, or the furling drum in something so it doesn't drag or catch as it's being lifted or because that's obviously the weak part as it goes up that's it that's it it's it's just it's not difficult work but it's stuff that you've got to kind of check and check and check the third time um, and obviously it doesn't it's not quite as intuitive because the mast is on its side and um, because these these kind of galvanized frames aren't big enough or aren't high enough we had to tilt the mast we had to roll the mast across yesterday and, and wedge it to get the the, the the spreaders that are on the lower side put on I have concerns but they're hopefully unfounded it's not through lack of preparation it's literally you know if you you know if, if by any chance we can't get one of the one of the stays on or one of the shrouds on it which just won't relocate or I can't kind of loosen everything enough but you know everything that every catch point has been greased uh, with silicon so hopefully nothing should bind we'll just do the best we can well it is time to get the mask back on the boat and it's a very nerve-wracking moment um, yeah, Nick especially is quite nervous just because, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, it's just something that we've never done before and the crane looks really small and, you know, it just all looks a bit precarious, but I'm sure they know what they're doing. <sighs> but I'll be glad, we'll both be very glad when the mast is back on the boat, all attached, everything is done secured and uh, yeah we can just get on with it okay I don't feel particularly safe just being exposed on the bow so I'm gonna hide over here which I'm hoping I'll be so glad when this is all over. That's okay. That's it.
Tranquillement. Tranquillement. seeing myself in the screen I've just woken up it's seven o'clock in the morning and today we are going sailing I think it's just about to start the engine there it goes and uh, that means that we are going out into the Atlantic Ocean Nick are you excited I am excited. Yes, of course I'm excited. But? No buts. No buts. But I've interrupted him in the middle of getting the boat ready and I know that no, he's like, that, but let's go. We, we, yes. What? Well, as I said to you, we may not be going to the Atlantic Ocean and we may be stopping at Port Royan. Oh, is that, I didn't realise that was a possibility. Well, it depends how, how, how good a time we make down this river. Okay, so we need to go. Well, it's not, it's actually not, it, what's, uh, what's going to delay us is it's got absolutely nothing to do with the, um, well, not that much to do with our departure time. It's to do with the tides. We're now we're back on a t in tidal waters. Mm -hmm. Depends how quickly we can get to Royan. You know, if we're coming down at nine knots, it's easy. If we're making seven, it's not. Otherwise, we're going to still be sailing at 10 o'clock tonight. Our goal today is to get to La Rochelle, but it is some way away. What is it, about 60 miles? 75. 75? Jesus, okay, it's 75 miles. I don't think that's going to happen today. Um, because uh, we don't actually even have a mainsail because we didn't have time to put it on yesterday. We we're still putting the jib on at like 8 o'clock and <laughs> we forgot to put the battens in because we were knackered. We had a long day of putting the boat back together and yeah, it was our last job of the day and obviously we uh, just were too tired to do it properly. Anyway, so we, we'll have to put the jib, we'll have to take the jib down and put the buttons in and put it back up again, but that's okay, we can do that once we once we get there, wherever there is. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that we will see blue water today. That's my goal. We're gonna be punching tired for probably about half an hour, um, but we wanna get a head start, so let's go. High water Puya. What's today? Thursday. High water 804. Face, let me see. Parts of you. On my heart, bodies interlace, flowing easy. Alright. And I can reach you from a distance. So, a little update we have picked up some speed exciting. We're now doing about four and a half knots, between four and four and a half knots. So we're just about a slack water we think. It's 8.30 so about half an hour after the uh, internet told us that high water was. But as Nick says, you know, that fish just got like some proper air just now. They're like, what are you doing down the water? Um, you don't know where the tire stations are, so if they're a little bit further upriver than we are, then obviously the, t the exact time of high water is going to be a bit different. So anyway, it's on the turn now, so hopefully within the next half an hour or so, we start picking up the ebb, our speed will get go up a little bit, and uh, yeah, we'll be able to get a little bit of a wriggle on. I still think it's a little optimistic to think we'll be... Uh, making La Rochelle today, what do you think Nick? 
We need to make a decision when we get to the mouth of the river because there's nowhere really, well there is, but there's quite a long jump between the mouth of the river and the next possible uh, place to stay. Um, so yeah, before we leave the river, we'll need to decide whether we're gonna carry on or whether we're gonna call it a day. Yeah, one thing about this river is that uh, there's a lot of debris in the water. Flotsam. Flotsam. Like even in the marina there was a branch but it was literally the size of a tree. It was huge. How big was that thing? Like maybe four meters? Four or five meters. It was huge. Like bigger than my leg. Bigger than Nick's leg. He says. But yeah, there's like a massive branch in the water up here that several birds are currently perched on. So it's just another thing to um, look out for but we're making some good speeds now we're doing seven and a half knots which is exactly what we're hoping we might even get some more uh, speed than that so I think it's about an hour and a half after high water so yeah that just pick up a little bit so Nick how far away from the estuary I think we've got about 20 25 miles to go 25 miles to go before the Atlantic Ocean 25 minutes to go 25 miles until the Atlantic and 25 Ocean. 25 minutes, I'll be in hell. I got 24 minutes to go. Are you excited? I'm excited. I feel like you're not reaching my level levels of excitement. I am. No, I'm. I, do you know what? I'm, it's kind of a little bit bittersweet. You know, I'm still. The thing is, it's been a little bit for the last month, a bit of a sensory overload. Like every day has been like, oh my god, you know. And to add to the sensory overload just from the canals. You know, because this boat has never done anything like that before. So we're like literally chugging along through some of the most beautiful scenery we've ever, we've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it has been like jaw-droppingly beautiful. You know, we've seen some of the best sunsets we've ever seen. Better than the Caribbean. Yeah. You know, we've moored up at night in some places that we'll never do again in a boat which doesn't have a lift keel. Um, so it's from that from sensory, it's been a real sensory overload from that point of view. We've had to deal with some... Um, some stressful situations, you know, the, the issue with the algae, that was stressful. Mm. And then there's all the planning about putting the mask back on, yeah. making sure we haven't dropped bits, lost bits, making sure everything goes back the right way so that when the mask goes up, it's not on backwards. <laughs> um, so literally, there's a bit of decompression from that. Yeah. So you're literally, I'm kind of winding down from that. I am quietly relieved that we've done the majority of our chores. Um, it's been an amazing experience, like a crazily amazing experience. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend anyone who has the means to do this sort of thing to go and do it. But it's, it's a really amazing experience. Um, probably one of the highlights of our, of our, of our trips. Um, but now it's good to have the... I, I'm looking forward to the, to the water turning blue. Yeah. It, even now I can see that it's, it's not as murky as it was. Mm. You know, and out there is the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's just, yeah, it's nice to be back. Everything in order? Yeah, yeah I just wanted to, the, I wanted to just turn the, the block on the jib. Had a twist in it. Oh, okay. Okay, my love. Am I on the watch for you? No, I'll take the watch for another half an hour and then you can have it. Yeah, before we get a mainsail up, that rig needs tuning. Yeah. The shrouds are too loose. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I don't get on that. But there's no point in doing it until we get to La Rochelle. I don't want to get a main on, but it, yeah, it's far too, far too slack. So if we're doing a nine and a half knots, we must have about four knots of tide. Yeah. So we get round the estuary, and if we get round about two o'clock. Yeah. We pick up the um, we pick up the flood going back in to the next river. Yeah. But us getting to La Rochelle or near La Rochelle is dependent on us getting it. Having calculated this correctly. Yeah. Sailing again. Motor sailing, kind of sailing. We have one sail out. We can cut over here. It's just those ferries we need to avoid. That one will clear us. And that one, the other one we may have to try to get transit. Yeah, 
that's west. So there's nothing between the next landmass between us and there is uh, east coast, eastern seaboard of the United States. The water's definitely getting greener. Oh yes, we've gone from brown to green. Yeah. Just wanted to give you an update on the water colour situation. So I know that you're as excited as I am. It's currently like a greeny colour, slowly becoming more green and I can kind of see like on the horizon that the, the horizon looks blue and uh, in a couple of miles we'll be well and truly into the Atlantic. The ultimate goal is to uh, actually get to La Rochelle tonight, but it's at least flying bugs. Um, but that's still quite a fair way away. That being said, we've made good progress. We are exactly where we wanted to be. We, we needed to make it out of the river, um, definitely by the time uh, we get to low water. And I think we've still got probably, I don't know, I didn't check just before I came out here, but we've still got several knots of current with us. So yeah, we're well and truly on track. It just depends on how late we want to continue. I must say, I'm extremely excited to be sailing Atlantic France again. Good evening from the coast of France. We are about eight miles from the uh, from La Rochelle and I have to say I'm very excited. The coastline doesn't look like much from here. I mean there's an island behind me it's only about I don't know four miles away and you can barely see it. it's very low, low lying. So the coastline around here isn't particularly spectacular but it is one of my favorite parts of France. It is just beautiful. Trust me <laughs> you'll see it. And La Rochelle, again, it doesn't look like much from the water. It just looks like a couple of, like, some white buildings on, on a very low-lying uh, piece of coastline. It doesn't look particularly exciting, but I'm telling you, it is amazing. It's such a vibrant city. It is just so cool. There's so much going on. There's an awesome market, and there's, like, the, couple of, the last couple of times we've been there, there's been loads of buskers, and um, the restaurants are amazing and it's like gorgeous anyway so I'm very excited to be getting to La Rochelle in two short hours and it's a beautiful evening it's about seven o'clock and Nick is downstairs cooking some dinner he's informed me that I'm gonna get and I quote random boat food for dinner tonight I don't actually know what that means but I'm obviously going to find out fairly soon and then it'll be just about time to pull into the marina which will be our home for the next few days. We've got quite a bit of work to do still. Uh, we haven't quite finished kind of getting the boat put, to, put back together for cruising. We decided to come to La Rochelle to finish up all those jobs because there's more facilities here and there's a lot more atmosphere here. It's, as I've said before, one of our favorite places in France. So we'd like to spend our time here working. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing for the next few days. And I'm excited. By the way, the beer is uh, non-alcoholic. Just in case you're worried that we we're drinking a bottle of beer before trying to dock up in the marina. No, it's between two and three. Three is to the right of two. Ah, oh, okay.
also want to show you La Rochelle because it is absolutely beautiful. It's very historic, very, very lovely, very vibrant. And that was awesome. Very impressive. That's a pretty impressive vessel. And they, do, and they do some pretty impressive work. Mm -hmm. 